Hey guys, welcome back to Anti-Hedge. Today we're going to be talking about seed phrases and a potential vulnerability associated with smartphones. If you like this kind of content, you should definitely watch this video to the end. Like, comment and subscribe and check out some of our other videos and social medias. But before we continue, I just got to say this is not financial advice. We don't accept liabilities for loss that you might incur and everything's here for news and research purposes. So with that in mind, like I said, we're going to be starting to talk about this vulnerability. Someone who's very much into computer sciences discovered a vulnerability within the BIP39 uh, proposal. What is BIP39? I'll explain that right now. BIP39 was an improvement proposal that was drafted to create a mnemonic phrase slash code, which is your seed phrase, to be able to generate your wallet if there was ever a scenario where it was destroyed. This is something that's very important because almost everything has a seed phrase at this point, right? This is how it would look in a nutshell right here. That's the BIP seed phrase, how it looks. And here's the other thing as well, right? There's only 2,048 words associated on that list and multiply that by 24 that's basically or by 24 to the power of 24 is how many possible combinations of words you could get this is where things get kind of interesting right everything is on this standard that's why this is kind of scary to think that there's a vulnerability and this is what the vulnerability is right if someone were to get their hands on your phone and start a chat app they could potentially use predictive text to guess the order of your seed phrase. And that's kind of scary because from my understanding is that if you, they manage to get their hands on your first word, predictive text could potentially accurately get your seed phrase in order, all 24 words. And they were saying like the guy's known as uh, Divinix on Reddit and he was stunned because the first couple of words could be a coincidence. But then when the whole phrase came out, that's where he ended up really shocked as to what happened. Given the perfect scenario, a mobile phone could accurately predict seed phrases just by clicking the middle button. And that's crazy because most people wouldn't think that. They were mentioning that like certain, uh, certain software was less vulnerable and other ones were more vulnerable. For example here, like it says Google's Gboard was the least vulnerable. The most vulnerable was Microsoft's Swift Key Keyboard and it was able to re predict the seed phrase right out of the box. That's kind of scary. The Samsung Keyboard 2 can predict words of auto replace and suggest tech text corrections have been manually turned on. Kind of scary to think that our phones could have this much power, this much information. And I think how it works to my understanding is that if you've input your seed phrase before, that's where it has access to these words, right? One of the things that they mention being very important is to not hold your keys or your money on software wallets. Cause I think as, as it's explained here, that the major vulnerability is in software wallets, meaning that like you put on your MetaMask, you have to input your seed through your phone, right? Now, right there, that's, that's already leaving an opportunity for a hacker to basically get those strings in predictive text. His exact words were in this thing here was to say, to avoid this, you're going to want to keep things on a hardware wallet. And it makes sense because when you mess with a hardware wallet, technically speaking, you are never inputting your seeds directly from your phone onto your wallet. It's all being done through the ledger or the Trezor. So even though Ledger and Trezor use BIP39, you can't use predictive texts through a ledger because that data cache hasn't been stored on the ledger. The ledger is separated from the phone. I believe as it stands that these vulnerabilities are more for software wallets. And he says that the important thing is to store any significant long-term holdings on a hardware wallet. Because if this kind of vulnerability is on a software wallet, it leaves a lot of opportunity for hacks. He also mentions, do yourself a solid quote and a quote rather, do yourself a solid, prevent that by happening by clearing your predictive type cache on your phone. When you're constantly using your seed phrase or you use it a few times, it's like that becomes part of the predictive type 
cash. Like it's going to be just kind of like, oh, the phone's going to use its smart technology to figure out like that's what he's going to want to type because he's typed it before. You got to clear your cash if you've used your phone to do your seeds. And then if you're holding long term anything significant, put it on a hardware wallet. I can't stress this enough because that's the only way it's offline. It's the only place where the seeds are generated in the key itself. Take that as words of wisdom. Be careful for software wallets because there's a lot of different vulnerabilities that are coming out there. And I don't want to hear about anyone getting hacked. It's kind of scary to think that smartphones are able to do that on their own. My piece of advice to you guys, if you don't own a hardware wallet and you're planning on holding long term, get one. And if you're just using MetaMask to play NFTs, be careful. Your phones are watching. And if a hacker gets into your phone via, let's say, a QR code, because QR codes are how they're getting in on a lot of things nowadays, they'll have access to your seed. And it's going to suck if you're storing, let's say, all your Ethereum on a MetaMask and then you lose it because of that. Guys, if you stay till the end, we appreciate your viewership so much. Like, comment, subscribe, check out some of our other videos and take care.